Right now I am with Chris Ellis who is working on a very interesting tipping solution. Let's say tipping slash micropayment solution mm -hmm. for content on the, on the internet. So uh, Chris, first we'd like to have an introduction from you, your background. Hi, well, my name is Chris Ellis. I guess most people in the crypto community would know me as one of the, the sort of early adopters of Feathercoin back in the day. But before that, my background was in uh, the film industry. I used to work in uh, post-production and still images. So I was kind of closely related to, to marketing. And I was constantly surrounded by very, very talented artists um, and content producers who would always kind of just like, you know, work in the film industry, work their way up. They thought that they could get in you know, get a career out of this by being an assistant or a run or an account manager. And then what I used to see was this very unmeritocratic system where the people that tended to be successful are the ones that were business savvy, perhaps they already came from money oftentimes, um, and they were the ones that got rewarded. And sometimes that was meritorious. And sometimes you would have somebody like, you know, Coppola or Ridley Scott, who no one's going to dispute, worked very, very hard to get where they were. But there were certainly some, some real, um, unjustified uh, people there that were making, particularly towards the end of my time in the industry, towards the 2009-10 industry, where decisions about what went in the trailer of the film or what went into the film itself was dictated based on focus groups and business models. More and more MBA started showing up. And as if you don't put this thing in the trailer, we're not going to get a 5% uplift on our profits on the first weekend, you know? And all of these kind of formulaic things. And so the art really disappeared from the industry and it became more of a sausage factory. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's my background. So then Bitcoin came along, saved my life. I was like, ah, oh, finally, you know, I'd saved up enough money uh, working in that space that I could carve myself out a career in the space. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so now you're building this uh, system called ProTip. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what ProTip is trying to solve? Yeah, absolutely. We're trying to help people connect to one another on the internet in more ways than just likes and, and favorites on, on Twitter. We want to help everyone be discovered for what they have to, to contribute and help everybody earn money. And of course, the, the easiest way for us to do that as developers is to use Bitcoin. Um, so some people describe it as a micro tipping platform, but basically ProTip is a Chrome extension, a lightweight Bitcoin wallet as a Chrome extension at the moment um, that automatically finds Bitcoin addresses on web pages. Mm -hmm. It times how long you spend looking at content on those web pages and then tallies up every week a proportion of, of your bitcoins in your wallet to all of those content producers. So the way it works for you as a user really is you just top up your wallet, you tell it how much you want to spend uh, per week looking at uh, images and videos and so forth and ProTip will do the rest for you. It will automatically detect the bitcoin addresses, it doesn't have to be using any special plugin. As far as an artist is concerned, all they have to do is install a bitcoin wallet and copy paste the address in the content. A lot of people say to me, but oh, no, really, like, do I have to sign up anywhere? No, you don't have to sign up anywhere. You get a Bitcoin address, you copy paste it into, into the body text. If you do want to get more technical, we do have uh, solutions for you. There is a meta tag, which you can find on our website, protip.is, where you can put it in the HTML header. For those of you who are a little bit more security conscious, okay? Um, and we're working on more, you know, improving that a little bit more, but that's basically what it does. That's a, that's a really cool solution. So essentially, essentially you can picture uh, that you're browsing, browsing a certain website. And while you're browsing the website, there's this Chrome extension in the background mm -hmm. that's monitoring what you're browsing, where the places you have spent more time at. Mm -hmm. And then once a week passes, it tallies, uh, tallies up all of these places that, that you visited. Yeah. And then you have your weekly budget or something like that, right? Yeah. So maybe my weekly budget is $10. I yeah. want to give $10 to mm -hmm. whoever created the content, which I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And then the Chrome extension extracts the addresses of all of these websites mm -hmm. that I visited, uh, the Bitcoin addresses. Mm -hmm. And automatically, uh, uh, the Chrome extension has a, a wallet of its own. Yes. At the end of the week, it sends 10, it divides to $10 where I spent my attention yes and it uh, gives money to all of these people yes. right yes uh, that's right. That's because humans have what's called discretionary attention in the lingo of behavioral economics. You can only have one thought at a time, you know, look in one place at a time. And the internet has really challenged us and made us realize that time is the ultimate currency because you never get it back. It's the ultimate deflationary currency, actually, because it gets more precious the older you get because you have less of it. And everyone has the same number of hours in a day. So it's also an, a great equalizer. Somebody uh, in Rio has the same amount of time as somebody living in 
central London. Um, and so really what we wanted to do was rather than people getting into Bitcoin by, um, you know, going onto one of these exchanges and they end up falling into the sort of gambling addiction where they're trying to trade to get more Bitcoins, we wanted people to earn Bitcoins, right? There, there are three billion people on the internet right now. That's more people than were on the planet in 1960. You've got a huge what's known as addressable market, okay? If you can't make yourself valuable to somebody out there, then... I don't know, so you need help. But the, the difference between ProTip and, and other solutions like this before is there's no plugin required, right? The, the artist, like if you were using something like Flatter, and I'm a big fan of Flatter, I'm also a big fan of Patreon, nothing against them, I support them, and I would, if anyone came to me and asked me what to use and they were shy of Bitcoin, I'd direct them there. But the problem is if you've got a YouTube channel, it doesn't work so well, you can't put a plugin on YouTube, and often people don't want to go to these other third-party websites and have to sign up for yet another database which could end up getting hacked like Patreons did, and then they get their credit card details, have to cancel their credit card, to change all their passwords, it's a nightmare. So all you have to do with this is just put your Bitcoin address in the description of your YouTube video, in the description of your SoundCloud, pretty much every social network has a space for you to say something about you. And all you have to do is copy paste your Bitcoin address and ProTip will automatically be compatible. Wow, so this is like, in, so if I have my own website, this is like, you know, it's, it's something I can do in five minutes, right? Yeah. Just put, yeah. just we, open up the we, HTML we, we, and we actually, just put my Bitcoin address yeah. there. We actually timed it. It takes less than 30 seconds um, because if you go to protip.is, for example, and you just, uh, you can just single click the install if you're running Chrome, that takes about 10 seconds to complete. And then the time it takes you then to go to, to copy paste the address from the extension into your WordPress, I think somebody did it in about 30 seconds. So it actually is very, very quick to set up and you don't have to give your email address to anyone. You don't have to register with anybody. You don't have to like do any KYC AML, you know, the banking regulation stuff. Like on Patreon, for example, as, as one of their content producers myself, I have to fill out this obscure tax form to tell the American authorities that I'm going to pay tax in the UK. And it's based on some weird treaty that the UK and the US signed at some point. I don't know where to find this form. It doesn't really help you. I have to then Google it. So they won't let me earn more than $600. Like, is it really worth my opportunity cost to go hunting down the paperwork of this thing? Just no, just no. Okay. So <clears throat> on the background, uh, are you using some kind of micropayment technology on Bitcoin? No. Well, sort of, sort of, yes. We're using the good, the good people at uh, BlockCypher have a micropayments API, which we haven't employed yet, but it is we are using their API as standard at the moment. The reason we didn't need to do that straight away is because we're bundling the transactions up weekly in any case. So it's not like you're tipping people as you're viewing them. It waits for a week and then you tip all in one go. And because Bitcoin works by charging you for data rather than the amount, which is what the legacy banking system does, it's much more efficient. Now, the largest fee that we've seen so far under a stress test was 39 cents. That's obviously very large, but that was under stress test conditions. That was us spamming one of our own addresses um, with lots and lots of unspent, you know, uh, produced lots of unspent outputs, which were very large in size. And then when we tried to make a payment, of course, yes, you do, you do end up paying a large fee. But that was an, that was an outlier. Most people are telling us that they're only paying between two to four cents per week. So that's that's a pretty reasonable, I think, model. Yeah. So I think the the most interesting thing about ProTip that what that I that I saw was. Um, that Nick Sabo has this article called The Mental Cost of yes. Microtransaction Payments. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, in that article, he basically talks about how the barrier to micropayments and these ideas is mm -hmm. essentially that humans don't want to account for every 10 cents yeah. or 5 cents because it's exhausting mentally. Yeah. So how, how, how have we exactly solved it? Could you explain to our viewers? Yeah, so what, what you can, yeah, so I'm also a, an avid reader of Nick's and I also am a, an avid reader of behavioral economics. So I used to be, an, and still am, um, a member of the quantified self community here in London, and that was where my inspiration came from. And I'd been using a lot of self-tracking apps on my computer for some time, one of them being Rescue Time. And Rescue Time monitors what you do on your computer. I call it self-surveillance. I don't have an objection philosophically to surveillance per se. I have a problem to the asymmetric info, that the information that that 
results in. So if, if the NSA know more about you than you do, or actually worse, let's give, pick a worse example, Facebook know more about you than you do because they're tracking every login, they're tracking every person's page you visit, and they're obscuring that away from you. So for example, if every day you make a trip to the coffee shop and then one day you don't because you have a hospital visit, that shows up on their data. It doesn't show up on yours because you don't think about it, you're just getting on with your life. And now they have more information about you than you do. And the problem is, is that these companies care about us more than we care about ourselves and thus we are in this situation. So I was a big proponent of what I call self-surveillance, um, this idea of self-monitoring. Nothing, None of the data in ProTip goes to us as developers, there's no server for it to go to. We don't run a server, it's completely decentralized. Your private keys are on your computer. The browsing data is wiped every time you spend out. Some people have asked if we can you know, export that for them and of course we'll work on a, on a solution for that as well. And so the way it works is that rather than you having to, the cognitive overhead is the lingo, rather than you having to think about paying somebody each and every time you interact with content, there's really only two events per week that you have to engage with, or one and a half. The first time when you deposit the money and set how much you want to spend, the second time when it makes the payment. The app has two ways for you to pay, something I call opt through, so it's not opt in or opt out, it's opt through. You can either choose to manually donate based on a reminder, and it's not pestaware, it's not going to keep popping up and binging at you and telling me if you want to remind me later. If, if you stop responding to it, it just won't bug you anymore until you click on it again. Or you can say, no, you know what, I trust this algorithm, automatically just pay. The, the, actually, in fact, it's the top 10 websites that you visited to, to, to uh, prevent spamming attacks on it and any subscriptions that you've made. So when you visit a, a website, it will tally up how much time. At the end of the week, it will take your top 10 websites and it will just pay, a, divide that up by, by your amount by 10 and pay them all equally. And you can choose if you want to to, uh, to opt in and subscribe. Now, what's, what's the verb here, right? eBay had, you know, buy and, and, and like is the, is the verb of Facebook and retweet is, a, is another action that you want to commit on Twitter. And so it's not unfamiliar to people, to, uh, to content producers, to invite people with verbs, their audience with verbs, to say, subscribe using ProTip or subscribe using any derivative of ProTip if any developer wants to fork ProTip and, and use it. As long as they maintain the core protocol and the specification, they don't start introducing any artifacts uh, into the design. All content producers should be compatible with all derivatives of ProTip in the future, including Mozilla, if they choose to, to put it into Firefox, as we're currently discussing with them at the moment. Okay, so, you know, so let's say I, I surf the web for one week, and there's this software running in the background that has detected which websites I visited, what time I stayed mm -hmm. on, on each of these websites, mm -hmm. and it's essentially collecting this this data in order to figure out who to pay how much. Yeah. Does this data always stay on my computer? Yes, it stays in your uh, Chrome content folder, in your applications data folder. Um, okay. So yeah, you, you can dig it out um, with a little bit of rooting around. It's a bit complicated to explain verbally, but yes, uh, with a little bit of research, you can dig it out. And we're actually working on a way for you to export that because actually people said to us, you know what, I actually kind of like this app because it just tells me what I'm viewing. Um, but it'll only tell you uh, what you're viewing if there was a Bitcoin address on the page itself. Okay, so you don't hold any of this data, no. so it's completely no, applied. We don't want it either, yeah. like we have no intention, there is no business model. The business model of ProTip is that we earn money the same way our users do. So you, there is a, uh, an option to tip us as artists, because we consider ourselves artists for, for wow. sure. You see what I mean? So, wow. like, okay, so the inspiration for this, remember, was that I had a YouTube channel called World Crypto Network. I have, in present tense, a YouTube channel called World Crypto Network. I fell ill, I couldn't do it anymore, I wasn't making much money doing it. It was a vocation. But nevertheless, I had earned in about 18 months or so 41 bitcoins net. And now that, that they all went towards projects, so that didn't go on my lifestyle, but that went on you know, my trip to Washington DC for the conference where I gave a talk and to, to, to the Pork Fest where I engaged a little bit more and did another talk there and was on a panel there. But what I found was is that if you make yourself vulnerable in, you know, to, your, to a community of people online, in my case it was YouTube and Twitter were the two channels that I chose, people will reach out and they will say, hey, you know, you've got something valuable, you know, but you've got to lay yourself bare. Like, you're already naked anyway, you may as well. And you've just got to display to people what it is you've got to contribute. 
and they will find you valuable. And once you've built a community, in my case, I've got now something like 5,000 followers, I guess if around five to 10% of them pay 25 cents a week, if you do the maths, you know, that starts to work out as, as a passive income. Right, I start to get an income stream on that. And if you check my Bitcoin address on my Twitter, at Mr. Chris Ellis, you can look up my Bitcoin address, you can see how much I've earned. Right, so it works for me. Why doesn't it work for anyone else? Well, okay, maybe you could say, well, Chris, you know, you're very charismatic and you've got all these other qualities about you, but I don't know. I think that I've got real hope in voluntary payments. This is a kind of an algorithmic market that we've come up with. It doesn't work in theory, but it could work in practice. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that, that you know, actually with a, a planned feature that we're working on at the moment called the ProTip Faucet, um, which will then distribute uh, Bitcoins out to its users. Uh, we could engage with sponsors and get them to sponsor the faucet. A lot of community management go around that. That could end up mitigating a lot of the fees that people might be paying, particularly in regions of the world, like I say, like South America and India and China, where perhaps, you know, four cents is a, is a lot of money to these people. Um, and as a result, effectively making ProTip free to use and free for people to interact because like I say it really is about giving people the ability to connect and the ability to to pay one another for the contributions they have to make to the world. So are you, are, are you looking to raise any funds for ProTip using a crowdfund? So yes, so as I said we have currently we raise money the same way that our users do which is a voluntary donation that you can make in the app itself as a weekly subscription. We recommend 25 cents, we will be very grateful for that. I'm also working on another project at the moment, the working title is not just made in China where I go on live stream for a prolonged period of time and for the price of a Chinese factory worker at Foxconn I make one of these which is a Bitcoin full node on a a Raspberry Pi, which is made in Wales, Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, it's a Tontec case, which is actually produced in China. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have all the other bits and pieces. It's running um, Raspberry and Jesse. It also has IPFS installed. And it costs about £50 to produce. That could end up coming down if I'm able to do deals with manufacturers. I've somehow got to do this in the next few weeks because I'd really like to get them out for Christmas. So, yeah, you know, if you'd like to see me on live stream, you know, for as long as I can stay awake, pretty much, um, making these things, then you can donate to us. You can go to protip.is for any updates or at protiphq. I'm at Mr. Chris Ellis on Twitter. We'll be announcing when that's gonna take place and you can actually pledge to buy these or donate them to be sent off to, to places like Botswana, South America. We have users in India. Anyone that uses ProTip will basically send them out a full node. And then not only will they be able to download the blockchain, but we'll also tell them how they can relay transactions on the blockchain chain yeah. okay so not just distributing the blockchain as a data set but also helping facilitate payments it incentivizes any local developers in these regions to build things like SMS gateways right and now all of a sudden you've disrupted Safaricom right it only takes one sort of enthusiastic kid okay to look at the code to, 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 to reach out to me and through social media as you can now and I can direct you to all the code you want and now you can be build your own SMS relay you know, gateway in your local community and now you've got access to the blockchain. Cool. So you said you're, you're shipping them for £50? No, it? no. Sorry, the production cost is £50 of okay. this. Like the case was about 6 99 and the actual Raspberry Pi is 35 and then the memory card is like 30 ish So it's about £60. But I've worked out that I can get the cost down if I buy in bulk because I've reached out to some of these companies. Wow. So BitNodes already makes yes. these nodes, but they are $200. Yes, correct. So the, the thing about the BitNodes is it's a miner as well. This is not a miner. It's, mm. it's just going to be a Bitcoin full node relay, which actually is very important also for the parity in the network. You want to have as many different copies of the blockchain as possible. Um, but of course you can improvise with them um, and you can use the JSON RPC that comes as standard in Bitcoin D um, and you can plug a miner in if you want. At the moment these Raspberry Pis, you have to overclock them a little bit for them to run Bitcoin in a stable way. You usually need to reset them every 24 hours or so because they will crash. Um, but like we're looking for enthusiasts basically in regions of the world that are not Europe or America to start hosting full nodes. And if you give us your IP address, I can connect you to my more powerful machine in my flat in North London, and then I can relay your transactions because you know there are commands in Bitcoin D where you can force peer connection between you know two two IP addresses. We can even set up VPNs and, and things like that if anyone needs added security. 
cool that that also sounds like a really great project so where can the uh, uh, where can our viewers discover more about your projects protip and the node yeah so as i said uh, protip hq on twitter i'm at mr chris ellis and protip.is is the name of our website cool it was great to have you on the show it was a pleasure thank you, thank you.